Access control domain two. First of all, let's look at the common body of knowledge domain synopsis for access control. Our main thrust in access control is making sure that for a particular information asset that only people with a need, very common term, need to know, have access with proper authorization, proper permissions to use that resource. Also, we want to identify what are those basic building blocks within access control to protect information. And in the eyes of the common body of knowledge, access control is the cornerstone, cornerstone, and that's an intentional uh, reinforcement of the term cornerstone of the other nine common body of knowledge domains. Access control is the foundation for most of your technical, physical, and even administrative safeguards. So in the domain, we need to know how to develop and implement an effective access control strategy. What are the knowledge objectives? How does access control work? How do we deploy it? If we're in a centralized or decentralized environment, what are the techniques, both preventive, detective, and otherwise, to make sure that our information assets are properly protected? Let's take a look at the agenda. First, we start with why are we doing access control? What are the basic concepts and building blocks? And then we look at some requirements. And then what we're going to find out, there's different categories of controls. A review of what we covered in an earlier chapter, the three big ones, which is the administrative, technical, and physical. And what we're going to find out, there are subcategories which relate to the intent of the safeguards, such as preventing something from happening, therefore preventive control. Another example would be a detective control, identifying that a bad deed is attempting to take place or actually has in the past, and now you've got to go and follow up on it. When we go through access control, we start with its cornerstone component, which is identifying the user. We want to make sure it's really Francis out there before we let him in to access different types of data resources. So who are you, and is it really you? Then once we've confirmed that it really is Francis knocking on the door who wants to come in, the next item would be data access controls where we determine what's he entitled to get to. And when he does, can he just read it, write it, can he delete it, give permission to somebody else? And then the fourth main area within access control is a record of what happened on a particular system. These would be the audit logs. And also, it's very impractical for manual review of any large volume of audit logs on a timely basis. And that'll take us to intrusion detection. And then when it goes on to autopilot, we'll find out what intrusion prevention is. And in the latter stages of the chapter, now that we've identified all these great access control components, is what are some more threats to information security? We saw some high-level ones in domain one. Now we're going to see some others to relate to threats to access control. And then a very important area, a proactive measure, although it's a detective control, is going out and kicking your tires, vulnerability assessment. And as we've done in all the domains, we'll review the key topics you need to pay special attention to in preparing for the CISSP exam and some more sample questions. Let's start with the purpose of access control. Some key elements. Making sure that only authorized users, programs, or other computer systems, such as those associated with other networks, have the proper approval, if you will, to observe, modify, or otherwise take possession of a computer system and its assets. Back in the early days of computing, often referred to as legacy computing, back when I first started with punch cards, the whole scenario of access control, when we figured out what that was, was a user relating to access on a computer system and selected files. And then it got more complicated, and then we went distributed, such as today's contemporary distributed web applications and something called service-oriented architectures. We have to remind ourselves only authorized users are allowed access to data. Everybody else, you can't get there. We've got to stop you. So we're talking about a defense against unauthorized entry, access, a use, and also abuse, if you will. And we need to follow our concepts of the classification process that we discussed in the first domain to say the owner needs to determine how to protect this information based on its value. Whether we're talking disclosure, which would be the enemy of 
confidentiality, modification, which is the enemy of integrity, or destruction, which is obviously an enemy of availability.